you know, they're usually small like <laughs> seven or something. <laughs> seven chains. Uh, one minute long. Let's see. Two. I don't know what it says over there. What does it say on the TV screen? Like one and a half to four. It's good for Sunday afternoon reading material. Kind of get a grip on it. Get a title on it. Yeah. The first read, there's some redundancy, but yeah, it was good. Yeah, so, some of it would just carry over actually revisions from what was before. But yes, okay, well, it is 5 30 p.m. Today is July 14, 2022. This is the work session of the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority. Uh, first, we would, I would like to uh, uh, introduce our newest members to the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority, and we would frequently refer to it as TUA. So when I say TUA, that's what it means. But our TUA's newest member this evening, uh, Mr. Jeff Cochran and Mr. Pat Howitt. Good to be here. Uh, you're familiar with everybody on the board. Uh, Commissioner Sulpa Bloney, uh, Commissioner Reese Sulpas, Commissioner, Commissioner Reese Sulpas, and myself, and Greg. And uh, although I was going to, uh, uh, and I will elaborate as we get down into the regular, regular meeting, but I just will, I'll let you know that uh, Commissioner Bolt would not, will not be here this evening. Uh, she actually tendered her resignation yesterday. So we'll, we'll, uh, I'll discuss that as we get into the uh, get into reports later on. That being said, I just want to know because the FTC, not everybody should know, but I, but I will fill everybody in uh, when we get into the reports this evening. Item number two is uh, Urban Renewal Authority and Urban Renewal Authority and Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority discussions and. Hi, Jerry. Uh, discussions. Now, earlier this week and tonight, I provided everybody with quite a bit of printed, printed materials. And those materials include the original documents that contain the uh, ordinances that, uh, re that uh, were voted on by City Trinidad City Council and provided the revitalization for the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority. Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority began actually the first time in 1965, I March, March, March of 1964. And it went, uh, for those first few years, they had a lot of projects, but it went dormant for quite a few years. Uh, it came into being for just a short time in the mid 1990s. And I think I was, I was part of the uh, board seated for a short period of time. I think it was for the uh, main reason for the disposition of some properties that Trina owned and uh, needed to dispose of at that time and were actually donated to the uh, local uh, college in order for the uh, building trades program to have uh, sites or lots to be able to build on. And so from there on, it went dormant all over again. And so in 2015, December 1st, 2015, the uh, uh, ordinance that authorized the revitalization of the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority was authorized by the uh, city council of the city of Trinidad. Uh, so that, that is the uh, document you see here that, that it's not uh, included with it is, you know, when, we, when we first provided it, it has a, a copy of the Colorado revised statutes that were in effect at, the, at that time. I did provide to, commission, to commissioners here earlier this year. I provided you, if you'll all recall this, so if I gave you another one, it's somewhat of a a copy of what you already had, but uh, I had them printed, so you got it. So what what this is is the 2017 revision of the statutes that actually appear in this document. So uh, you know redundancy to the point that uh, you know one one actually supersedes the other. But I wanted to give it give everybody what it was as far as the original the original documents. And then finally, and this this one actually uh, should say just printed out of urban renewal documents, not or the plan documents, not planning documents. But within there is everything that goes. Uh, in, in some cases, there's a, a repetition of the ordinances that appeared in the other in the other manual or the other uh, book. But that uh, in in this book provides to uh, the, a copy of the area, the Trinidad Area Condition Survey 
that was uh, ordered and required uh, by state statute in order for the determination of the existence of blight. At one time, you'll see reference in some of those. Uh, it was referred to as slum and blight, uh, but the word slum was really not an appropriate. So everything now these days is referred to as blight. That word is not used in conjunction with the conditions. In, in, uh, you know, so, so that is the, uh, the condition survey that was conducted by uh, Richard Cunningham. And I think that took place in 2014 and 2015, leading up to the time that the uh, plan was adopted. Uh, one of the tabs in there will be released to is the actual plan that was adopted itself. Uh, that is a, tr a 2000 plan that was put in place and by which we operate for the Trinidad River Renewal uh, in Trinidad. And then the, finally on the back is just the uh, all the annotations by uh, Ricker, Ricker Cunningham about uh, um, comparisons and other information that they provided to the City Council in order to consider and finally adopt and create the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority. A little bit of history and uh, I guess in the years 2013, 2014, about that time period, there were, in downtown Trinidad especially, there was not a lot of development, re redevelopment, or anything taking place. A lot of what you see now, depending on how long you've been in Trinidad, uh, there were some things that just weren't happening. So there was a concern by the city council at that particular time that something needed to be done, especially for the core commercial district of Trinidad, to see things start taking place. Well, right about that time, or shortly within that time, development did begin. Okay, what you, what you see now, it doesn't it doesn't mean that Trinidad, Trinidad is anywhere in Trinidad, because it, if you see the uh, uh, the blight, the blight study indicates that there were over 5,100 parcels that were, uh, how would you want to call it, reviewed in the city of Trinidad. And, and that's where the blight study came. And I, and I really got ahead of myself. Those were tagged. Those were tagged as blight in 51. Well, yeah, they, they, they found conditions in blight in all those 5,100 parcels. And I, and, and I want to, I'm already violating what I was going to already tell you early on. Uh, I want to I uh, encourage everybody to speak loudly, clearly, and as close to the microphone as possible because the meetings are recorded. And if you go back and listen to some of the meetings, that has been that have been provided, especially those that told us. Sometimes there's no real clarity coming from up here, so I just want to say, and I sat back and I become the first violator. <laughs> in any case, yeah, speak loudly and clearly toward the microphone so we're able to carry on through the recordings. The other thing that it is too is I, uh, I have to prepare minutes and then go through what's been recorded to be able to provide that, so it's helpful to me. Old ears sometimes don't hear as good as they should. So uh, again, I, I apologize, I got ahead of myself uh, just a little bit. But in any case, uh, you know, that, that's where the, uh, the uh, recognition and the need for the Urban Renewal Authority to be revitalized for Trinidad because an urban renewal ex exists from 1964 was the original urban renewal plan that existed. It, it ran its 25 years and then it went into dormancy. So uh, 2014, this when the conditions survey uh, took place and 2000, 2015 is when I left all the hearings, the public notifications, the meetings with other governing bodies that, that have of interest, which are the di taxing districts, the county, and those. That's, that's where all that took place, leading up to the final uh, hearing or the, or the hearing, called the actual the hearing, that occurred on December the 1st, 2015, uh, upon conclusion of that hearing. I believe I was there. I don't think anything uh, came out of it. There was nobody speaking basically uh, in a negative way. So it was adopted December the 1st, 2015. So the plan as we see it now is that which is, um, came into place at that particular time. So at that time, was that when the county was approached through the City Council and Tara Marshall to encompass the entire city limits for urban renewal? Is that when that was adopted? Yes, yes. All, all the, uh, when, when that that plan that plan that you see in there that was taken to the to the Los Angeles County. I think at that time I can recall it. Uh, yeah, Mr. Right. Loudon was there, and uh, certain th things were changed as far as the Tura the Tura uh, uh, 
schedule of properties that would be subject to the uh, tax increment. And so I, yeah, that, that's when it all happened. So that's when it came forward from there. Um, and this is an opportunity, just to be clear, Madam Chairman, this is an opportunity that um, I did a first read on this. I came up with a bunch of questions uh, with regard to and in this workshop is the opportunity to ask those questions. Uh, it is. It's a discussion. And, and, and yes, and I'll answer to the best of my ability, sometimes from memory, if not having to uh, delve into the documents. So I will I'll, I will give you uh, what I can, and if I can, I'll get it for you. Oh, and not a problem, and, and, and some of these things. So in, in, in the packet was the, the June 6, 2016 um, letter, uh, Urban Renewal Authority yes. Projects in Downtown Commercial Area. Yeah. This was sent out in 2016, great letter, good notice, lots of change since 2016, so include property owners, lots of property owners. Um, this is more of a kind of a, a, a wish list kind of suggestion out there is that we reissue this letter uh, soon after some review and we reissue this letter to current folks and, understand, and let them understand that the, the tour is open for business and there is opportunities for folks that own properties to either bring those clear and, and, and updated or to make available tour to use some of its power to bring funds to bear, investors to bear, in order to help some, with some of these blighted areas. 51 was the number then. I imagine we're not that far from 51 right now. Well, it was 5,100 parcels in and around the city. See, I said 51. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, and so these were sent to downtown property. Okay, these these are within within the what we was termed the core, core area, core commercial district. So the number I, again, there's, that's uh, having to check archives. It could be difficult. But again, and this work session, yeah. so we're just discussing yeah. kind of things that along. So again, just a recommendation that it may be a good opportunity to have this thing out. It's a great letter. There's a lot of new things out there. I let folks know that. Yeah, um, what I would recommend on that issue um, when we come to item seven of the work sessions. At the end of the work session, uh, we have uh, items for future work session discussions. Uh, if you want to implement that type of, uh, uh, that's how we would do it. That for moving forward with this board, and then 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 Chairman Grego can put that on the agenda as well, and then we can make a vote on it. And that's, that's how we get it accomplished. That's right, the, the, and I'll do that. Some of these things I just kind of tag into this in this discussion. Thank you. That was on the. Like I was two years ago, all full ready to go with. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I read this stuff. I'll right. do a second reading of this thing, yeah. and I, I try and get great. I'm, I'm glad to see this. So the other thing is, is, is I'm looking at these things, and when you're looking at this, you know the two, you know the 1964. You know there was a period of time. You know in the 90s something happened, and it was called. You know then in 2015 it was uh, re reconvened, and 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 forth. But when you look at some of these things, the reference documents to that in the plan go back to a 2008 city comprehensive plan. Now we have now a 2017 comprehensive plan that isn't really being utilized. Where tour is mentioned throughout in most of those areas in the 2017 comp plan, um, and so it looks to me as if as if there may be again we put this at different parts of the agenda uh, or, or for future times. But it looks to me that <coughs> some of these things need to be renewed in our agreement. And I understand maybe there's a, a hesitancy to do that based on opening it back up. And which would throw us into the 2016 legislation that was passed that actually changes the whole board makeup and those kind of things, which I don't think is a bad uh, thing. But well, well, so, so you understand what I'm saying? We're, we're referencing, we're referencing, we're referencing this in the original documents. Exactly, which is which is which are our current documents, correct? Well, yeah, those are the current right. documents as far as the plan. Okay, so the without going in and making an official a change to the plan. We would still hold that was the plan that was in place in 2015, the 2008 plan. Exactly. So now it's the 2017 plan. But we would be subject to the 2017 plan. I mean, it wouldn't. It wouldn't say, well, we're just going to go back to the 2008 plan. The 2008 plan really is non-existent. Well, since the, again, but since that's referenced in, in in these documents, these are kind of legal governing documents. You would you would think that you, if the worst, the easiest thing would be. To language added to update that to, to current plan rather than being a specific plan, or updates to a specific plan, 2017 plan, because I believe there's going right now there's talk about a new comprehensive plan uh, underway. So to make notes of that in our minutes, and possibly. Well, yeah, you know, right well, and those because they're, they're different for, plans. Are, well, they're for they're things for reference, and well, I'll let you go ahead. And what else? I mean, what else is it that you saw that you have a comment? 
Okay. Uh, two. Um, uh, reference that set. Um, and you mentioned this in the, with the 5100, which is, is a big list. It seems that one of the things we'd like to try and do is is, is get that number updated. And I believe I believe there is an, an updated number of blighted homes and properties in the area. Many of them that either have been abandoned, ownership is in question, or are really on the on the productive revenue side. There's no revenue coming into the city or the area for that, which is which falls into the economy. Well, they're actually. Of, they're actually leaned. They're, they, the city has liens on those properties due to um, the owners. Which kind of brought me to this redoing re this letter that goes out, make sure those folks are in, because it seems like, you know, what we want folks to know is you can work with Torah. This isn't the Urban Removal Authority, it's the Urban Renewal Authority, and there's things we can bring to bear that actually you can't do on your own. A private enterprise may not be able to do it, public partnerships may not be able to, to do those things. So work with those folks, pursue owners. Because some of the times what we, what we may be able to do is create a land bank with some of those things, as you did before when you were reconvened in the 90s, that said, we have these properties, we need to do something with them, let's put them in with the TSC and allow allow productive use to actually apply to them again. And so it seems to me that would be something, again, this is just from my reading and what you gave me. You can be a bigger stack on those questions. <laughs> um, and then, again, I think this also gives us an opportunity to work with TSC. And their housing program to really try and form that partnership that we can do that, that isn't political per se, but it's actually functional and formative to actually move progress. So I really thought that maybe if, if that list existed, and I understand it does exist, and you know, you've seen it, right? I have, I have. That maybe that uh, that be, that be made. So was that put out by the city of Trinidad? Uh, yeah, I, I received it from uh, uh, I believe Ken Robinson, okay. uh, building inspector. Yeah. So it's, there's currently 26 homes on that list that and I went out and and actually visited each each and every one of them and out of the 26 there's two that could be refurbished the rest need to just be scraped and, and, and then in order to you know the new um, codes are, are requiring that you have a 6,000 square foot or larger lot in order to build a, a new home. Uh, but this would grandfather in as long as you built under the same footprint. So whatever the footprint currently on the property was, we'd probably want to, if, if Turo was going to go in and, and actually purchase these properties or acquire these properties, then We'd probably want to go out and do a site survey to find out what exactly the existing footprint is on the property prior to scraping the property so that we'd have something on the books that said this is what we're going to do. We're going to scrape it and this guy or this developer is going to come in and build on it and this is the footprint he's going to stay within. Uh, An inventory. Uh, Basically, uh, uh, a site survey yeah. inventory. So to summarize, I, you know, I, I think it would be a good idea to maybe update our documentation and our governing documents just to be uh, consistent with where we find ourselves right now. Uh, I find that's a kind of an appropriate thing to do. Put a list together with regards to some of the things we can do. And again, this letter that, that you had sent out to folks a, a while ago, I think that's a really good instrument to actually let the public know and landowners and property owners know that, you know what, the door's open. Um, because this, this body with folks that don't participate and don't want to make themselves known, and I'll just throw Cougar Canyon out there as a conversation at, at some future time, they're, they're actually, you, you do start arm wrestling with, with entities. Um, it doesn't end up being where, hey, we're here to help. It ends up being that we're moving forward with regards to the, the, the dictums and the governing documents that put Torah in, its, in, in the job that it's in. And so I, I just think it's a good idea to maybe let folks know ahead of time that this, this can be a really friendly, good, positive process to move things forward. But if it needs to go in a direction because of either people think they, they've got a lottery ticket and they're holding the property, or there'll be one time that somebody will save a project and move it forward, and that's the time they're actually going to do action, the community doesn't benefit uh, from that sort of thing. So that, that's the summarizing. Uh, documents, a list of things, and then let folks know that uh, these are the things. We're here to help um, and uh, let us help. Thanks for the opportunity. Mr. Conklin, do you have anything? I don't. 
Mr. Opus. I think there's some good ideas, uh, Mr. Howlett. Thank you. Um, uh, again, I'll reiterate the fact we'll uh, put those at the end of this work session as discussion for future, and then throughout the, the agenda making process, Chairman Gray will can move forward with those to make, make a vote on if he chooses and we choose to do so of how we want to do that process. The, a lot of the problem we've had, uh, Mr. Howlett, in the past is not having an executive director, and, and that's what we're uh, the last couple of meetings we've had that discussion with the city, uh, with the mayor, you were here at that time when Mayor Rico was here. I think that will facilitate us helping move forward with a lot of these processes that you're talking about too. So I think this is perfect timing for all these things to come together, um, have some new um, blood on, on this board that's interested in serving with us collectively, and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a good time. Uh, and they bring up some good ideas and uh, options. I'm not sure if they would fill in the guidelines of the urban renewal uh, legal uh, things that we have to follow, but as long as they do, I don't see an issue moving forward with some of those items and ideas. We'll address that. Yeah. Commissioner Dionne. I agree. There's some really good ideas. Um, I a lot of it that we can't do is because of money. Um, I do know that. We, our number one priority should be finding somebody so that Ed doesn't have to do everything. But I do think we could use it as a, a future discussion. So uh, my comments to this is, uh, when you mentioned the letter of the property owners, and again, those were the uh, downtown property owners. And so I, I think that it's one where we're going to figure out, you know, that was pretty much shotguns at the time. And I, you know, there was a list and it, it's somewhere I would just have to locate it. But there was a, you know, a, a shotgun list and actually subsequent to that, because we, that was done in 2016, he said, hey, we're here and we'd like to help and we're the government, we want to help and those kinds of things. So that's where that went out. And I, and I brought that because I wanted to show everybody what I'd taken off on in the, in the past. The, the comprehensive plan that you mentioned, 2017, yeah, uh, you know, it, it is germane to it as well. But if we're going, if we're going to make any changes to that to that document, it's going to require the utilization of an urban renewal attorney. So, and, and if I might, um, it seems to me that maybe maybe investing money and money is always an issue, but maybe investing money. In the early days, days to set the right foundation for an executive director would be funding legal counsel to actually make well, sure we're, we're that that's done. That, that's actually you know, and then so you make sure. And, and so I'm just saying, you, you, you kind of line those things up with regards to limited funds. It's, it's, it's number two on the on the agenda tonight. I got a lot to talk about that, obviously. And then the uh, uh, we we uh, touched briefly on the uh, houses. I guess it was on the AD, under the ADO list. So yeah, we can do that, and uh, you know, putting those on on the uh, on, on, I'll give everybody a heads up on putting those on the agenda. If you got them, I'm going to need some uh, um, input uh, beyond you know telling me to get it on the agenda because again, I'm going to go to item number two, and I will. Uh, anything else to talk about on the on the uh, the plan documents, the uh, Colorado Vice statutes, anything there? We're going to touch any more on that, so we can move on to number two. All right, item number two this evening is a topic of uh, executive director. And I provided information in the packet, and I will be able to just give a little uh, little more information at this point. We have since, yeah, since 2000 and September 2017, with the departure of the previous uh, city manager, uh, who had been appointed as the executive director for the uh, Urban Renewal Authority, uh, basically, uh, I've been trying to administer and address the matters for Trinidad uh, Urban Renewal Authority. And we're, pu we're pushing that at this point basically three years. And it is, I can tell you by experience, what it takes to do it is, and, and for pre preparation for this particular meeting has been actually, it, it has consumed a lot of time for me and I have to actually put a lot of other things on the back burner to make sure that I have these things prepared for tonight. So what, 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 what I've also provided with that is a memorandum from uh, uh, Mike Scholl at Ayers and Associates, who provided this summary about other regional examples of what the other uh, URAs are doing 
in the southeast Colorado area. And in, in most cases, there's an optional way of doing it. Uh, not an optional way, but there's uh, assistance from the uh, uh, staffing from the uh, various cities. Uh, in times we look at, uh, like the things that bubble, uh, Pueblo Urban Renewal Authority and the Colorado Springs Urban Renewal Authority have been able to accomplish over the years. And in fact, the last time that uh, we had the presentation by Mike Scholl, saw some very impressive projects. These are URAs that have been in existence dating back to at least the time the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority was found, was uh, uh, organized, uh, or, or, or shortly thereafter. And they've been in continuous operation since that time. So over that period of time, they have been able to amass some uh, pretty good work just from the tip that they've uh, been able to collect from those projects that <coughs> have happened in those uh, uh, various municipalities. So that was provided by uh, uh, Mike Schill, and I provided that to everyone in the packet so you could have it as, as an example. That was actually we're not in the amended agenda, I believe. So one of the things that I want to talk about, because it is is very germane to the uh, to the subject of an executive director, that that in itself could involve some funding by Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority. I gave you a copy of what the Trinidad for the Earth, the the budget for 2022 uh, uh, is, and it was pro it was prepared with historical information, and we were uh, garnering just about $40,000 per year from uh, our, TIF, our TIF revenue coming from Los Angeles County, or not Los Angeles County, from those uh, uh, properties that are the uh, uh, assessed, uh, that we get the incremental tax from. One of the things I think I was going to, I, I was going to mention down the line in the regular meeting, but since it's, I have budget in, information right there, you'd want to know that I've had communication uh, with uh, Los Angeles County Treasurer Donna Leonetti because I did a comparison of year-to-date collections from 2022 to 2021 and there is a substantial difference and that difference as a result and that substantial difference is a reduction. Our year-to-date, uh, a year ago, uh, June 2021, we had, we had uh, received uh, just over $31,000 in TIF and I have it marked in one of my and we'll, I'll, uh, as we get down the line and I have it marked off, I will let you know. We are currently in the range of $20,000. And I did send in a, a, a uh, uh, inquiry to uh, the uh, Los Angeles County Assessor. And uh, she did inform me that because of a reassessment, a reassessment that occurred in uh, 2000, for the year two, in, what, 2020, 2020 for 2021, the reassessment uh, actually resulted in a, in a reduction in an assessed valuation of about nine million dollars in a lot of in, in, in yeah. and so therefore our tax increment is going to see a reduction I'm estimating right now I'm waiting and I shouldn't make that you know, that formal projection but I'm I'm looking at that of being a 45 percent reduction in the tip that we get so if you take 45% off of 31, 40,000, 40, we're looking at maybe $26,000 for this year. So that being a consideration, if we're going to look at, at finding assistance by, by way of an executive director for the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority, we got to figure out how we're going to coordinate that with the city of Trinidad if that's going to be the case. In that information that I provided, which is, uh, uh, along with the budget. There's a cooperation agreement that you see in there with the city of Trinidad. And the original cooperation agreement that was put in place back in 2015, that was at the point that Trinidad Urban Reno had no money. They basically starting from scratch. The first the first uh, revenue we realized, and I believe it was in mid-2015, was from the sale of a property uh, that garnered us $3,000. And from that point, we had some operating funds in our accounts. And so the, origin, the original document that I showed that I have in there, that goes back to 2015, actually enumer or enumerates the uh, uh, administrative services that were, that were renewal is allowed 
to have used at that period of time. That cooperation agreement was then again updated uh, in 2017 when Greg Sund was acting as the Urban Renewal Authority Director and the City of Trinidad City Manager. And in there they basically gave the same, but in there, there is a stipulation, not reading it right off the bat, but it does it, it, it's indicate in there that we may require uh, to pay the city back for any services. That has not happened so far, thankfully. But one of those services that was provided to us is, as you know, Brittany was in here just a few minutes ago, administrative assistant. Uh, where she, was, she has been assisting us for that number of years, providing these uh, recordings. Uh, city Council allows us to use these chambers and uh, up to including uh, the services of Trinidad Times TV, is that Tom? Pardon? That name of your company? Trinidad yes. Times. So those meetings are all recorded by uh, for all the governing or all the uh, 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 boards and commissions in the city of Trinidad. And those are all taken care of by the city of Trinidad. So those are all costs that are out there that you know we need to consider as we go forward. What is it we're going to do? How can we accomplish it? And what may it cost us that we have that we can afford? Then we have money. We have money. And you see it uh, if you saw the financial, uh, the financial report for the month. Yes, there's money in there. But you know, going forward, we all, you know, we're gonna, is that going to require as I get uh, into the year um, a budget amendment to the Department of Local Affairs? Because if I'm going to realize a lower amount of revenue, I'm going to have to make some changes in there. And so it's, uh, you know, we will not. Basically, we will not overspend that budget. That budget, uh, unless we, you know, depending on what what kind of plans we make or whatever request we get from now to years in, I don't see us. We will not overspend the budget. The, the budget has to. It, you got it. That's all you can spend. So that's where it is. So that's my information regarding the executive director. I do have to say, and I've said it for many times in the past, but it, it's a position that. You know, how, however we're going to attain that, it has to be a consideration because it, it's getting a little bit laborious for me to be able to do it. And if we're actually going to be able to go out and entertain projects, and you know, uh, as you see in Mike Scholl's uh, notes, projects of any magnitude were not, are not going to be proposed and begun now. And you see the fruit of your labors in about six months. It's going to take a bit, if you're going to look at any kind of a project of any substantial size, they are going to take some time for that to happen. It takes uh, negotiations with the owner developer and however it's going to get there. So those will take a little bit. So to get that accomplished, it would require, you know, the old overused cliche at this point, boots on the ground. And that, that you know, it, it's one where it's, it, that those boots on the ground have to know all the fundamentals of urban renewal, what urban renewal law requires, what urban renewal law allows to be able to pro provide for the uh, uh, developer property owner. A lot, a lot of potential in the city of Trinidad, obviously, in different ways. So uh, again, uh, something to be done, but we, the, the way we have to accomplish it is uh, difficult at this point without an ED. Now, I, I, uh, uh, go, maybe I'll, I'll go back just a little bit. Gregson, I, I believe Gregson coming to the city of Trinidad when he, uh, uh, came to the, uh, he was appointed urban renewal director, he had some, some working knowledge of urban renewals from his past experience in other places. Pre, the most previous uh, 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 city manager at the, at the onset said, you know, that's something out, outside, the, uh, outside the parameters of what he was familiar with. And then again, our, if we're looking to use city staff to assist in this, uh, you know, if that's a possibility, it's one is how, what are our expectations into somebody's already crowded uh, uh, workday? You know, we're saying, okay, we, we would like to have, we would expect, you know, 10, 15 hours a week, if that's what it is. Can they, can they, can we justify, can they justify giving us that without us, you know, saying, okay, you know, how, how do we pay for it? So those are all things that we have to do if we look and say, okay, we're going to engage the service and services of maybe a consulting firm, heirs and associates being an example, that can do that. 
Uh, there are certain, certain things they can do to assist, to up, lift us up from where we're at. How we're doing it, I don't know where we're at, but how we're doing it, that's a possibility as well. But those, again, you, you, that, that will come at a cost, so yeah. that is a uh, budget concern. So those are the, those those are our concerns. That's everything that I provided there, and uh, you know something that has to be considered. We are on the cusp of getting a new city manager, so you know, it may take you know a bit just to get their ideas. And I'm not anywhere suggesting that the that the incoming city manager, whoever that might be, would be that person. I mean, you know, that, that's one where they could assist, coordinate, say this is how we could have it happen. But that's you know. Those are thoughts, but just just you know, the plainest way I can put it, it's going to take a lot more than, than us sitting right here, and for me to be able to actually go out, uh, entertain uh, owner owners, uh, developers, and start taking all that forward. That could you know that that will work. take a lot and take a lot of expertise in it. Sometimes urban developers being those uh, persons we might need to have. Then on top of that would probably require the services of an attorney with uh, urban renewal specialty. Question I have: yeah. When the uh, assess evaluations changed in 2021, or they were evaluated for the 2022 tax year? If I remember correctly, I think it was just the RAR, which is the residential assessment rates, that were lower. Um, statewide due to Tabor and the Gallagher Amendment, which the legislature's amended and, and worked with. I'm, I'm just curious if that is accurate Well, I'm the Treasurer's yeah, Office. This just came to me today. So, so what, 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 what I'm going to, you know, as a commissioner, I, I see this funding that comes in, and I don't recall it being that much of a difference of 40%. Um, a lot less in revenue for for any department, much less the TIF. So I, I'm thinking, I'm hoping that there might be a discrepancy on on the treasurer's end. Well, I'm, the collection I'm, of this. Yeah, and and, and this is why we had a look. We had this shit. problem two years ago, or three years yes. ago. I remember. Yeah. So I will move forward if it's okay with the with the group here, um, and having a conversation with with Donna and with Jody. Um, that's your, that building is your second I, I home. I live in there, yeah. And I can go and visit with them to make sure on behalf of this board that these are accurate this time. Because I sure hate to see uh, from uh, a $14,000 loss in revenue based on, on a typo or mistake. Well, look, she, she sent the work, work ticket or order to, I guess there's an entity outside. I got the email on that that she said, and this is the information that came back, because my inquiry, uh, and, and I guess... This is from Donna's office. This is from Donna's office. So, you know, do you want to talk about this now, as since we've got, we're talking budget and AD, or do you want to talk about it and elaborate more when we get into the actual financial information in the regular meeting? Can we do the financial at that point? Just talk in general with regards to executive director, and this is executive director's spot, because I have some these questions we yeah we, we can, right, but, but i just because i provided you with a copy of the budget telling you what what was projected for 2022 that may not be the case and so this was going to come later yeah, they got, later I mean, so i'm giving it, come, so I'm giving it to you sir because this is one of those things what i got today is like well, i didn't expect that you know so i'm, I'm providing it here because i guess i can sh i can share i need to share the commiseration with Davis Everybody here. <laughs> um, it gets the cough. But let's 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 assume that that's not the case. Let's assume you talk to folks and the forty k. Forty k is not a lot of money to work with either. So let's say it's not split, and you're dealing with a whole forty k, and that's all worked out. I'm looking at this body and tour as a startup. It's the way my mind will kind of work on this. Uh, we don't have a lot of funds. We have some money in the war chest, but not enough to do any really substantive work. We have specific needs. And you can't do this, you can't be an executive director, run a business, try and be a family guy and have any balance in your life. You've already been doing it for a long period of time. So even if you have the 40 grand, I don't know from what I've looked at, if somebody that's going to be qualified to be an executive director that already understands Dora, urban renewal, the renewal process, folks are the things, how to negotiate, how to, how to be a boot on the ground rather than just be 
boots in a car. I don't know if that, I don't know if that there that's not a low wage uh, position. Well, okay, right. So um, when you're looking at that and you say, but you don't stop the process and the startup because you can't get there. If the real issue right now is money, and we just don't have enough, and even if we had the whole 40k, I don't think we still have enough to do all the things that that are laid out. Isn't there a way for us to say, listen, there's there's six of us, seven of us here. Who has certain, because this is a talented board, who has certain specific skills they can bring and time that they can bring to the table? How do you divvy up the stuff that you're doing right now? Sam's having an executive director because you can't afford it. What are the, if we had a if we had a plan of action that we were going to say, these are the three most important priorities we want to do, certainly that would help an executive director fulfill those that that, that the, you know that uh, agenda and say these are our objectives going to make it happen executive director it seems to me that you, you that you said we need an executive director we need some legal help we have consultants if we split these things up into actionable items of what can we do and what can't we do right now it seems that our consultant right now the, the meeting that I came to they were in that there's certain things they can help us with right now they don't have a dollar attached to it they can actually put it up we need you to do these document upgrades you need to do these things. What's that going to cost us? And that cost we may have. We may have in the budget. We may have in the bank. We may have to put out into a, into a Q4, into Q1, 2020, whatever. But at least you're actually matching money to a real objective action item that you want to try and address. And so it seems that in the short time, you got two new guys. You're going to have another new person here in a little bit, and it sounds like we may have another person here. It seems like it. We owe you the opportunity to offload some stuff and maybe take some of those things out so we can still move move forward. And that's just that has nothing to do with the dollars if we had all 40 grand. It has to do with what what is our what are our prioritized objectives that we want to accomplish. Do those match the money we the monies we have right now? And then being Torah, certainly if we're successful five years from now, we will have had a dramatic impact on the revenue. Who would come into the city and thus Torah and our school district, special districts, and all those other folks. And so, you know, it's, it's that chicken and egg thing. If we don't do many things, we can't have a positive effect on those things. And we don't have enough money to do some of the positive things we need to do. To me, it just seems like if it's possible, you did compartmentalize the things that you've been tasked with. It. And again, this is you're the chair, you, you, whatever you, you say. But I, I have time. Um, I did join the board to, to help move forward. To bring energy in, so if there's something you said, Pat, I need I need 20 copies made, or you want to. Jeff's out there and has great experience in certain areas that we can do. If we task different members of the board with things that actually fit their interest, where they're doing, so they're already doing the backstroke, then they do the backstroke stuff. I think that may take alleviate some pressure that you have right now. Give us a little room to exhale a little bit prioritize a couple of items and then match a budget to those items when we get to the budget side of this. Does, does any of that does that make sense? It does. And and what and, and you'll you'll see because with that information and I and I provided it because the the, the, the budget is very germane to you bet. I mean it it, 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 it it is just about everything. And so I in, in no way would I even suggest and I hope it wouldn't take it that way the forty thousand dollars which is what was, and I'm hoping there is an error in my understanding, but looking at those numbers, uh, you know, it's one where the, the, the budget did uh, include uh, allowing for uh, legal travel training uh, consultation. So, so that money is in there. So it's not, it's not like it's not we have it. But again, you know, so, yeah, I have to be able to say, you know, that's what it is. How will we prioritize and earmark that to where what, what your right. objectives are? Yeah, right so, now. so as time goes, I mean, we're we're at mid year, so some of these, you know, but we're, we're, as we head to 2023, uh, there's going to be a revision to all this what is coming, what's not, and how we're going to handle that. And again, some of these things that we would look at for any outside like consultation services, whatever else, yeah, they, they come with a with the, with the cost. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's just one of those where I need the board to know that because that's something that, you know, we're, we're going to do it and uh, be, be cognizant of what it is that we have. Uh, you know, I'm not, not, how do I put it, I'm not cheap. But cautious. But, but I'm cautious with other people. Well, we have a fiduciary responsibility. Yeah, so, so that, and that's why it's, that's why it's brought up there. 
but that's for everybody to know that that's what we have, that's what we work with, that's how the arrangements were in the past, and that could actually come to fruition again in the future. I don't know, but again, it's still it's still a, a ways out before how we'll know what the uh, administration of the city is going to be. They may have some ideas on how we can accomplish this as well. The, the, whoever the new director is, if they have any uh, uh, past experience with URA anywhere, that could be a possibility. And one of the good things is depending on the state where they come from, uh, just about, I think, 48 of the 50 states have urban renewals. And so, you know, we... So, so let me ask that. It, and again, I'm a prioritization guy. Is is getting the, the co uh, this uh, cooperation agreement between the uh, Trinidad, the Tora, and the city updated, started in 2015, updated in 2017. Should that be one of our things to move forward with in order to engage the city right now as they're bringing somebody in, get on their agenda, this is something important. So they can either tell us, we can fund you at this amount, we can give you this amount of person, this is the kind of man hours you can expect from us, this is the kind of person we can lend uh, or, or lease out to you or lend to you. Is this one of the one of the things that, that actually gets prioritized then in order to make sure that we're in that slot for this executive director? I, I think that should happen when you've got somebody in that office. But do we but do we do put a plan together before they get into that office? Well, it, it, if you, I, I'm one of those guys, if I know it, if I, if I know the asteroid's gonna hit, I wanna actually take action now, not well, the day the asteroid hits. Well, you know? I, it, the plan itself is all, it's giving to us. I, to, I don't know what we would be negotiating it, because if you look at it, it's basically giving to us. And so there's, if you- Well, I'm just saying update it, when you update this, you could get a new commitment from the current we call folks. I mean, we're well, copies in their commitment already. It's just yeah. they don't have the person to commit. Yeah, it's a commitment already. Yeah, I mean, they, I don't, at, what, at what, at what, at what, to what degree in price? I, I don't, I didn't see Well, it, 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 it mentioned in there that the urban renewal could be required to, to re reimburse. reimburse. It, so it's it, in there, but I can't cite it exactly. So it, yeah. it exists on that, on that updated uh, document of 2017. Yeah, I just look at it, it, it no dollars. It, yeah, yeah. So it, you know, it, it's there and it puts us on notice. We never have been. And we, you know, all those services that we've got, have gotten, have received, and are receiving, again, the use of this facility. The, uh, well, we have, I guess, so I'm, let me clarify, because I may not be communicating well. We have those things right now, and they haven't been changed, we haven't been charged for them. The thing we're talking about now that was an executive director that we do not have, and are unable to fund right now. Which right? we started the ball rolling a month right. ago. And until a, I know the mayor was here, right? So, so let me, if I may, Chair, I, I am very happy to hear all your excitement and ideas and moving forward and getting stuff accomplished. Being on 10 boards of directors that I sit on, I caution us moving forward at too fast of a pace due to the fact of uh, for urban renewal as new board members, there's some training available that once you go through that training in Pueblo, it's once every two, every six months. It's coming That's up. done in November. November. We're coming the up. The biggie comes in now. Uh, for, so the boots on the ground, what can I do to help? I have time. That's wonderful. I love it. But I, I, would, I would encourage that we have that ability to have that um, documentation of education for you guys prior to going and taking on your own. I, and I, and I, I, respect, I respect that position. I'm just going to say, some people, are, there's there's already pre-experience you can bring. I don't believe right. I come to hear. Right. Um, no, they just need that. Uh, just to cover if the boards if the, behind. If the, if the speed. Uh, I think education is for all the board members is positive. And again, we we'll look forward to it. What I'm, I guess what I've said is, if, if updating documentation is moving fast. No, um, but there's nobody in that office yet. And we start pushing those buttons with the city council. What kind of relationship are we going to have with them? And retribution, or if there's any type of. Uh, I, I get your excitement, Pat, and I'm 100% behind it. 100% behind it. Get to work. I know. Is where I'm at, you know. Uh, but in all, again, in the experience I've had in the six years of serving with all the different entities I serve in this community, <clears throat> sometimes the wheels turn a little slower than we'd like them to. It's unfortunate. But in the long run, we've got so much accomplished by waiting the process out as slowly but not overdoing it and making sure we cross all the t's and dot all the i's in accordance with the other entities we're working with and especially with the board of county commissioners um and the department of human services and all the other entities that i work with 
I was exactly in that position you're in right now. Oh, I'm, and I'm only specifically right. sitting in Torah. So none of those other things. But I wasn't on them at that time either. When yeah. I first took office, I had that same energy, and I still do. Uh, I just learned how to um, cautiously walk so I don't step on anybody's. I think this. Goals. I think this is a very talented board with a very important mission. With a lot yeah. of advice to give one another, right. and I think this Maybe. is the best thing about everybody. Is and I always say this: more minds are better than one. And well, the best ideas, right? Collectively, we can come together with the best decisions. Has the city put an ad out for a city manager, or are they interviewing? They're down to two. They're down to two. Yeah. They, 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 they interviewed today, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, 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 like I say, what, 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 this is all no. informational. I'm not, I'm going to provide it to you because those documents are, you know, what we operate by. So everybody had to have it, and you know, the, the, the discussion is invited. It was necessary. We do, you know, formulate plans. We want to do it. You know, there's things that have to be done, can be done, will be done, but you know, th th there's a beginning point. We're at that beginning point. Uh, and again, I personally, I, you know, from where I sit and where I what I've done, yeah, I, you know, the assistance of an ED, um, ED secretary, because that's what that's what it, the, the terminology is, and the position is a secretary, executive director, as it's identified in Colorado State statute, and it. You know, in the statute, it says you may appoint. You don't. It doesn't basically say you have to or you can't. It says you may appoint a secretary, executive director, and then defines their roles and responsibilities. And so that 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 in one of the sections of the CRS relating to uh, urban renewal, it states it. Okay. Four meetings I've attended thus far, even in the, in, in, this, in the in the seats. The executive director has been at, at all four of those meetings, and I would imagine the four meetings before that and the four meetings before that executive director was on was on that list. It seems like we need one. No, it's not always been on that list. Not, that, not, not, not that much. Well, the desire was when Sun left, but certainly from that time and whatever that date was, and that was a while back, right? Because it's been trying to replace it. September 2019. 19. So uh, my point in, in support of you is that if that ends up being what we need in order to accomplish the mission, then that's not moving fast. That's just moving very prioritized to one thing. And what's the objective and how do you move forward on that one thing? So budget, like we have our budget is number one. So in, in saying that with the city of Trinidad, since we've already had that discussion with the mayor and hopefully he has passed that on to city council at this time, they will be going into their budgetary um, meetings now in September, like the county does, and start looking at all that. But that's where I think we have some time between now and then to give the new uh, uh, city manager some time to get his boots or her boots, wherever it is on the ground. And then we can have start setting up that discussion with the mayor and see how we're gonna move forward for funding mechanisms while they start their budget. Because it all comes down to money. If we don't have for money, this is all for nothing. We're not going to be able to hire somebody, and I think part time is probably going to be the best thing for us at this point. There's no sense in spending a hundred thousand dollars a year for a budget when we have forty thousand a year. There's just no way we're going to well, do something like that. But, right. but, but right. if you read the, the memo from Mike Scholl at Ayers and Associates, and what he talks in there is that in, in certain in certain communities that you can like dovetail or piggyback with other 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 boards and commissions Smart. that have that, and you can you know. If, you know, throw in some. I mean, it's, it, mm -hmm. Talking about Colorado Springs, but they, no, well, the they yeah, yeah, they, 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 they uh, well, Colorado, yeah, the, the URA in Pueblo is a, is a mighty force. So, uh, that, that one, and they're they, piggybacking people. Uh, yeah, to, to some degree, but but uh, like the smaller counts. I mean, because you know some of the giants, uh, it, it's hard to make a comparison to. It's a unrealistic dream for us. But you look at the smaller ones like Urban Reno and Lamar, uh, Walsenburg, um, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they integrate with like the Main Street programs and they share, uh, well, they, they share uh, works, resources. Works well for everybody. Right? Yeah, and so that, that's one of the possibilities. I mean, so, you know, both, those become, and it, it's one where it's like somebody that knows what's going on, you know, an ED person. They know what's going on in around the city and collaborate, they, you know, and those cooperations exist. So he mentions it on the, on the mail, and, you know, and those are things to consider. To say that we, we would hire a full-blown, full-time, you know, there's, you know, and that was never, 
never an, an, an undertone of mine when I mention this. Again, bringing up because that's why I said we're like a startup. Uh, a startup yeah. doesn't, yeah. They, they, buy, they get a fractional CFO. Yeah. They don't hire the CFO, yeah. right? And there's so many different and I think we can do fractional things. And there's so many different moving parts that's going to contribute to this board moving forward. Um, I, I think we're in a, in a good spot to, to start the to launch, right? To launch, yeah. yeah. We're Very good. Thank you. We're better for that doesn't make a difference. Right. Okay. Is there anything more on that? Nothing else. All right, then. Item number three. Uh, facade improvement incentive program updates. Uh, I did uh, mention in my memo to uh, commissioners that uh, we have an we have an approved uh, payment for the project at the SCRT building on Main Street, which they redid the uh, uh, updated the facade, secured, uh, you know, painted, did, really looks good. You haven't seen it? You got to go by and see it. And so the plan was to have it on up. Uh, for, the, for uh, consideration for payment on the regular agenda this evening. No request, and there's a copy. There's photos in there. I'm sure everybody has seen it. You saw the mandate out there for quite a while. Looks good. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks very good. Yes. However, they, uh, I, I was in contact with Gloria Hall from SCRT and asked her if, besides the photos, if there was documentation available that we could support our, our final, our final uh, uh, approval of payment. And she indicated that the painters uh, are out of town at the time doing projects in Denver. Uh, they didn't build her on the way out, which I think is pretty nice. All they have into it so far <laughs> is like a, a $3,200 deposit. So that this one, uh, although on the regular agenda, we don't have the documentation to finally pay. So as we get into there, maybe a, somebody would want to move, uh, go and remove it, or when we get there, uh, a motion to maybe defer it to October uh, August because she said that when they get back she'd be able to get it but it was not available when we last communicated Monday or Tuesday. She could tell me that they paid a deposit but they don't have the final invoice on it. Makes sense. And I think that being very appropriate to have in order to finish out our file. Great. Quick question on that? Yes. There, it's no longer Southern Colorado Repertory Theater. That's actually not, not the organization anymore. It's Main Street Live. Mm -hmm. Is, no. they, they are. They're still, they use Main Street Live as their, their DBA. That's, I'm, that's my question. That's is their DBA. DBA. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, so the company is still, is that then, right? The entity, right. very good, thank and the, you. And the application reflects it. Very good, I just. Yeah, it's on the application. Any other questions on that? Okay, item number 3B. 2021, we had an application from Kip Hamden LLC for two locations on Main Street. Uh, one of them is 319 West Main Street, which was uh, the most recent occupant, I believe, was a dance studio. And then there was a second application for 313 West Main Street. I don't have the dates exactly, but uh, that, that one was for the building, which is currently uh, the occupant is the Chronicle News. The Kip Hamden LLP application for 319 West Main was approved. Uh, I, I, I had those notes, but certain things have taken uh, a, a, a misdirection on me. But anyway, that one was approved. That application was for eight thousand dollars. Nothing has transpired yet. Uh, the same, th the three thirteen West Main Street. It was deferred because at the time that the presentation was made, uh, Carl Carl Gabrielson. Uh, made a presentation, but they, with, with the application, did not provide any documentation as far as project costs or, uh, or related. So that one has been deferred since that particular time. I was able to talk with, uh, uh, I had a, a conversation with uh, uh, Tim Lamb, who's the attorney for Kip Hamden, who was at my office, and it's in my notes there. He was delivering a check to my office for Tura. And I asked him about those, and he did indicate to me that uh, it's just it's, they haven't been able to get it on the schedule of the contractor, which is Trinidad Construction or whatever Carl, the company that Carl uh, heads. So he said he would he would uh, uh, get that to occur. Just by chance, last night at the uh, inner at the meet and greet for the new city manager candidates, I ran into Carl, and he said. He, they are, his company is going to get get it prioritized. That will be on the 
uh, construction list for the not too distant future. So that project should see some progress. The other one will come back before us once they provide the documentation of what the project costs are going to be. Did, I know we changed that policy to 90 days for fruition. Will we authorize or award this one? Was that in that contract? No. Okay. Yeah. Similar kind of question is the, is the, the everlasting golf stop is you know, something that lasts forever because they somewhat, with limited funds, they somewhat lock up funds for other projects that may be a little more, you know, uh, shovel ready, ready, ready to go. Right. Are, are they doing that at all? Have yeah. they locked other people out from the opportunity to apply for and get a facade grant because of the delays? Yes. Uh, and that, okay, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, for, fortunately, there haven't been any competing applications on it, so no, it, it, it was there, and so uh, cool. that did happen. The only unfortunate part on that, I guess, we want is that those amounts that either were approved and not paid last year or anticipated that could be. I had to carry that amount forward from last year's budget to this year's budget. It didn't increase it. It was just money brought forward, like twelve thousand dollars in fund so, balance. Yeah. So you look at it, so the, the 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 numbers for this year would be greater than they would have been for the thirty thousand dollar allocation that we were using. Um, that's because we have that money brought that forward into two thousand and twenty-two, assuming it's, that was when they would get paid out. That's the update on the uh, facade applications. Any other questions? Item number four, and it'll be on the agenda for pay this evening, is pay, uh, pay request number five for the La Puerta de Phase One Development Project uh, from the Corregidor Construction for the Americana Road Project. That will be on the regular meeting for consideration under bills. Uh, and I did. Uh, also, note to you, put you into the notes that on the 6th of July, uh, uh, Kip Hamden did present to her with a check, which is their uh, required deposit under the uh, Phase 1 Development Agreement for La Puerta, uh, $900,000. I did bring that to the uh, Finance Director of the City of Trinidad. Those funds have been put into the not the Tura project account, but they hold those and pay those along with their funds as needed. To pay these bills as they come. Is this just, are we a pass through then, basically? Yes, that? at this particular point, we, we, we're basically the trustee of those funds. Okay. Okay. But so there. So that thirty-one thousand dollars, that's not Toro money. That's, that's not Toro money. Got that's it. just it comes in. It's a check that we we pay for and administer and, and have to keep track of. And then you know, in going forward, the project is is just short two point six million dollars. In today's world, how do we it? In the, in the uh, agreement, it does require that the owner, the owner of the project, if it, any overruns from that original development agreement, that was a two point five, whatever million dollars in change, the owner is uh, aware of it and responsible for any overages beyond that two point five million dollars. Item number five: urban renewal training. Uh, I did in your packets provide information. Hoping I didn't do any overkill, but I gave you as much as I possibly could. Appreciate it. Uh, and there is a lot of other information available at uh, DCI, Downtown Colorado Incorporated. Uh, there's a lot of information. Uh, the 101 that I provided you in there is the basic. There's one coming up, the tax increment, tax increment, increment finance, or TIF 201, which is going to be somewhat of an advanced course. Uh, is going to be held August the 9th at DCI. Now, I was in contact with the coordinator of DCI in the last couple of days. The, the location yet to be determined, but it's assuming it's going to be at Colorado Municipal League uh, offices on Ogden Street, which is directly north of the Capitol. That is, that has yet, it's going to be from 12 noon to 4 p.m., but that's not there. She said, the, depending on how things go, and I don't know what that really meant, but it could become a Zoom event opposed to an in-person event. So, you know, you know what the underlying thing is when they say that, you know, it could be, could be COVID related, I don't know. And everybody has those precautionary things taking place. But that's the one. So, if you are interested, I need to know, just shortly, because it's an RSVP, so they know how many. Yeah. Two? Yeah. 
Okay. Check my calendar. Yeah. August 9th. If it's Zoom, I will. Okay. I am. Yeah, my daughter can go to the dance by herself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, it requires an RSVP only because. Now, the, old, the other thing, too, is uh, it doesn't cost us anything for the uh, uh, enrollment. Uh, we piggyback onto the uh, city of Trinidad's enrollment, so all the boards and commissions that it's applicable to uh, get the resources. So I, I've been in communication with uh, <coughs> uh, uh, people downstairs to make sure that uh, everything's lined up, but I will get that uh, uh, taken care of. And if, yeah. and if anything is continuing to go the way it's going as a Board of Health member, um, presume more likely is yeah. good enough. I gotta say, the way you did, the, the, the last one that they had, the call, Southern Colorado Summit, no, it was not. There was one in February, and it was a godsend because it snowed a kick. And um, so getting from here to Pueblo would have been tough, so they changed the entire meeting to, to Zoom, able to accomplish a five hour meeting in four hours. No mileage, no hazard. So it does. It does have its benefit. So I will. Uh, it's to be determined. I'll let everybody know that has to be. So I will. Uh, I will communicate. Uh, if there is travel, uh, again we have in the budget. There is uh, provisions for reimbursement for uh, mileage, uh, hotel accommodations. If there has to be an overnight stay, so that would be the case. If we need, you know, we've got to coordinate and you know, the, you know, the person that. You know, on and does so much for us is Brittany. Yeah. We'll, we'll make those provisions whatever they have to be. But I'll make. Uh, I'll make uh, is there a cost added to this? Uh, uh, no. Okay. We're reliant on membership of uh, getting us the resources. That's one of our resources. Membership gets us <coughs> through all the training and all the other stuff. Uh, if they're not, it would cost fifty dollars a person. Uh, working with them downstairs on that. Anybody else? Anything on that? Any questions? Again, those, those are the best sources of training. I give you what I have in my own feeble way. Uh, there are better places to, be able to get that. Item number. Oh, I'm sorry. Anybody else on it? Anybody any questions? You know where you can find me if, uh, or where you can contact me if it doesn't come to surface tonight. Item number six: Board member vacancy applicant. And we have received an application from Mr. Jerry Bagley. Mr. Bagley is in the office, right in the uh, audience tonight. Yep. Mr. Bagley, would you like to come forward? Yeah. Where would you like me? Right here. Right, come up to the podium, and I'll think, think it's close. I'd like to introduce my wife too. Hi. 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 Uh, introduce yourself. Anything okay. you want to say, and then. Well, I just want to say thank you. I, I, uh, I'm very interested. I'm still trying to navigate myself through what you're. All talking about here and you know, <laughs> trying to see where I fit in and, and, and how I can help. Uh, I teach at Trinidad State uh, College. We're, we're doing the blighted house thing. We're trying to, you know, and, and make affordable housing. So, you know, working with the city, uh, Kent's been real good. We've been helping us do that. And we're trying to, uh, trying to uh, get ourselves in a position where we can get some of those blighted houses and, and take care of those liens that you just mentioned. And uh, it's, it's really been like pulling teeth. I mean, you know, so we've had to purchase some low income housing and we're on Stonewall Avenue right now. We're at 926 Stonewall, 920 Stonewall. Uh, we're about ready to finish up one. We're still trying to get some traction with students and we have work session. What we're trying to do too just to tell you a little bit about our program, and you can kind of see maybe how this can help with, you know, boots on the ground type of thing. Uh, and, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm probably talking off the cuff here, but, but at least I can tell you about our program a little bit too. And what that will do for us is um, to help with the blighted houses. We're also trying to build a workforce. So we're doing work sessions. I'm also a contractor. Uh, JB Builders, I'm trying to advertise, but I'm just saying we're, we're here, we're busy. My wife is a contractor as well, and so we're, we're doing two new homes at the same time that I'm teaching. So, um, uh, but people need people, and there's not enough training coming through the high schools and some of the things, just because of cutbacks and the way society has been. 
but you know, being old school when it comes to uh, uh, you know the training that I received when I was in high school, you know, we had wood shop, you had a metal shop, and here I'm still smoking. I think so. But uh, anyway, you know, you have uh, so many things that aren't being offered today, and so as an employer, I'm seeing people come to work for me that don't have skills, yet they want top dollar, and I need help. I'm going, well, you're probably not worth that much, but, you know, come with us for a week or something. Try. And, and they don't, and I think so people will be able to say, you get those people. And, and that's what's up. Well, anyway, I'm trying to at least, from a grassroots point through the Trinidad State College, is to get training. Have, and we have a great summer class going right now. We have seven people in there. And they're really young kids, and, and we have one one adult. But people want to learn how to do construction, and they really want to learn how to do it right. But these are four week sessions. When they're done, they'll go out, and we'll try to get them jobs and try to do stuff. And, and it, it, it's it's working. It's working. Some of them have come to work for us. So, and I wanted to see what that would mean uh, for some of the people coming because. You know, I said, well, before I go send them to uh, another contractor, I want to see what they're doing, you know, and see how they respond. And some of them have terrible work ethic, you know, getting up late, want to leave early, you know. I mean, you know, it's just, you just have, but we're trying to at least start that and, and uh, or help with that. And that's why I'm doing it, because when this opportunity came for us, for me to come and teach again, um, I said it can't be the way it used to be because I used to teach the Trinidad uh, building trades, uh, Trinidad State building trades back in the 90s. And it was just a different deal where we had um, people come in for certificate programs and then they would come in for, and they'd be there for two semesters. Then we had the degree program for, for, um, uh, for two years. Well, people need people now. So we said, well, well let's just, because as a as an employer, I need people to help to read a tape measure, do some of these things, and uh, uh, that that doesn't take two semesters to do that. So I said all that to say this: being on this board, which I'm still trying to you know navigate, like I was saying earlier, um, I think I have some some avenues that can help through Trinidad State or whatever it might be, and being an employer. Um, you know, we can maybe get some of those boots on the ground to, to help with some of these things. I don't know what that means exactly, to be honest with you, but I do know that, you know, we can we can be somewhat of an asset. As I get to be a little bit more familiar with this, you're, you're talking about funds, uh, you know, $40,000, I'm like, you have $40,000 in the entire budget or just for the director? So I'm still trying to figure all this out. Or is there hundred $900,000 you know, or you know, I don't know any of that. So what I'm saying is I'm still trying to figure out what where I could fit in. But anyway, like I said, I'm a contractor. I think I have something to offer. I've been here for 43 years. I've never been on any board. Uh, actually, I've been on one. It was a grievance board for the city in which I heard uh, people that got in trouble and I had to, you know. So I was on there for a few years and then I was off for because of uh, COVID later on. Or whatever. But but anyway, you know, I, I want to kind of give back, and so does my wife. We want to be able to help and do something. Like I said, I, I, I don't, I, I heard the back and forth, and you know, kind of getting uh, used, you know. And anyway, I would really like to serve on the board. I don't know if that's why I'm here exactly, but uh, uh, Sophie, Ed, I know you for years. I, I know you guys. Uh, I don't know you fellas, but uh, at the same time. Um, I think where we're trying to do, you know, or is is trying to help our community. That's that's what I would like to do. I really would. I, I don't know what that means exactly, but I would <coughs> like to do that. And uh, I think we have a great avenue at Trinidad State. Boots on the ground. Part of it. Okay. Any questions for me? Yeah. Um, I mean, Commissioner Howell. I'm sorry. Uh, first of all, welcome. Oh, uh, thanks. I, I was there weeks ago. And oh, really? I, yep, and I'm sitting here for the first time, still trying to figure out where I messed been, <laughs> as you probably noticed, right? So it's all good. Right? Energy, new blood, thoughts, right? Desire, 
right? Yeah. Um, I actually just, it's a time commitment. Did you see what Ed presented gave us? I, 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 I can hear it in Ed's voice. I talked to Ed twice on the phone. And I could hear it in his voice. I didn't have to see that sack, but I could almost hear, he goes, oh man, I, you know, I mean, he's a, he's a businessman. Right? You, have, you have the time commitment. You've, you've evaluated that in, in life. Uh, you know I, I said, I'm not sure I'd like to come and just see. Very good. I think it's, I think it's a fair question and a fair yeah. thing to think about. I do think there's some real great opportunity mm -hmm. with person with your experience, your connection to the community, love for the community, the TSC thing, and actually seeing some of the things we're going to need to actually move through. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I certainly am appreciative. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I felt, I felt he'd be a great asset to our board. He's a, he's one good contractor. Just even with the facet program, mm -hmm. there was times we would go look at stuff, and as not being a contractor of that type, <laughs> I could tell you how important the seaman what to do. But I, you know, the building part, I didn't know, and we didn't have anybody that had a lot of experience with that. And I just thought a contractor would be great for our board. Um, thank you, Mr. Bagley, for being here. Last time we saw each other was at the commissioner's meeting, I think, yeah, about three about years ago, yeah, right. when this whole building trade started. Um, question I have for you is, how is the funding mechanism looking with the AG's office moving forward for that program? Do you have, have we talked to Dr. Uh, I, I haven't um, heard, uh, I'm, I'm working, uh, Keith Gibson is was kind of the... He's still doing it. He right. just, just okay. formally, as of... June thirtieth, I think he was done. Okay, well, in fact, I know he was. I shouldn't say anything. But Leanne Richardson is now taking his place, and I don't know if you know Leanne or not. But, and uh, what they're doing is, I'm, I'm hearing where we're going with stuff. Uh, we what we're trying to do is once we finish one house, we're gonna sell the house, and those funds go back into the program and back into the AG. So that way, it starts to get some traction. We're getting real close on that first one. Okay. You know, it's taking us a little longer. Just because we're set up in four-week work sessions, mm -hmm. which we had nine last year, and that's a, that's a different concept. When people think of college, fall semester, spring semester. Okay. So when we come to you know, we're doing four-week sessions like we just started one now, and we'll end August fifth. Then we start another one on August twenty-second, and we you know so and people are. Uh, if I, t you know, in other words, it's a new concept. And because of COVID, you know, there's a lot of bad things with COVID. But one of the good things is it makes people think outside the box. And it happened at the college. It happened with all schools. Because of that, the, and I give the, uh, Trina, I say a, a big pat on the back as far as I'm concerned, because they took my, my idea to do this work session thing and to try to get training, training for people, uh, you know, through our program. And they had to think outside the box and try this. And they did it. And now we're starting to get some traction and we're in with the schools. Now the schools want to start bringing in a couple people for four week work sessions because we deal with math and we deal with, you know, some of the things. So they're thinking outside the box. I don't think they would have done it if COVID didn't happen. Okay, so there's possible future funding available to keep going with it. Yeah, I'm sorry, that, that was the long <laughs> version. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, did, I did reach out to show the board's information to Dr. Eppert oh, okay. um, regarding your application. If it was any conflict of interest, she said there is none for her. Oh. And the true Nessie College, she just gave you nothing but praise. Oh. Um, the other the question I have, and due to my uh, fiduciary responsibility for this board, is on the financial side of things, uh, uh, Commissioner Cochran. Cochran mentioned liens earlier in in your business side of it um, there's no legal issues that you have out in the community that no. will prohibit you from being on this board I don't think so I mean unless, unless somebody informs me of something you know, I don't think so. <laughs> well you know I hate to I hate to give a thumbs up for somebody who's got 50 lawsuits against them as a contractor oh, that's just a yeah. question that I put out. Uh, one of the things that we've, we've dealt with is uh, the, a lot of the properties already have liens on them and so they can't, they're so bogged down, they can't just say, uh, like, uh, and hopefully I'm not talking out of a turn here, 
Kent Robinson can knock the, the buildings down, but he can't give them to us. Right. Because we we go fix some of these houses. And the county might have those as well as county held tax liens too. Mm -hmm. And so, so because of that, you can knock them down. Then the city has to go cut the weeds and maintain the lot instead of giving it to us, and which we can fix it up, sell it, and you can go back in, into the what I was hoping to do the community. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we don't we don't gain anything outside. But the one thing I would say with with our program with the AG with the millions that we got, um, they said. That our like our students, they get paid to be there for those four weeks. It's a pretty good deal, and so and so they come in, they get paid, and, and the folks that uh, or the uh, schools which we dealt with, Walsenburg High School, and uh, they sent some students over that were somewhat troubled, but like working with their hands, and they came in and they, they got really good grades. They're you know they perked up, and uh, and and that's what I'm saying. We're we're trying to get some traction with those schools and bring some people in. And that will help with. We can maybe fix up those houses. Why not? You know, I mean, the, the last comment I have is thank you for 43 years. I've been in 30 years, and Ed and Sophie longer than that. We're not um, going to say our. Yeah, yeah. But well, I wasn't born and raised here, but uh, I came here in 1979, and uh, of all the family that uh, we have uh, that has lived here. And this is this is just me, you know, kind of uh, being nostalgic here a little bit. Uh, we have. Um, I'm the only one living here today that's from our family. We have family that lives that lived here before and moved, and and but uh, our family, because I think I've been here the longest and everything. We've actually have our family that's buried here, and Tom would know that. Okay, he was helping. So in other words, Trinidad became home for us, and now they say we want to go home, and this is they want to be buried here. They consider this home. Well, it's as tough as it is to be a private business in this community. I mm -hmm. know the first and the gentlemen are learning the same way. Yeah. For uh, that kind of tenure, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, did Jerry just let you know the reason that you're here tonight is because part of the application process with the city when you apply for boards and commissions, you have to attend a meeting to actually know that you, yeah. you want to come mm -hmm. into it. So that, that's well, why. I don't I, want to be the, you know, the, the director here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I heard all that, so I'm sorry. So yeah, that, that's so, but, yeah. It, give, it, it doesn't give you a full indoctrination, but it gives you an idea of where it's at. And yes. Whether, you're, you know, mm -hmm. whether you really want to have a full intent to serve. Yep. And so, you know, that, if that's your intent, and I will uh, forward on to the... Uh, and by the way, we're, we're, we apologize for being so late. We're just, we just got out of school and trying to get over it. So. Yeah. You didn't miss anything. Okay, well, but anyway, but I didn't want to disturb thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes, and we, um, we, this was your first meeting. You hit a big one, and we like confusing people. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you so yeah. much. You, you, well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, we'll, get, we'll get up to speed. I'm not sure I can go, we'll comb through that like uh, over, you know, a cup of coffee or something. But, uh, you know, we'll we'll get up to speed on some of the stuff. So sure. the next step is to contact the city. Well, yeah, I have to I have to send a letter on to the uh, mm -hmm. to the mayor to the city clerk, who will send it to the city council, and and they from the uh, just get your uh, appointment uh, yes. letters in the mail. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, 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 one one of the other things uh, is I'm glad you did talk to Dr. Ever because I wasn't sure. You know, sometimes we come in, you know, blue, you know, and, and and to know that there's no conflict. I don't want to have a conflict. You know, I want to make sure. And like I said, in the experience of the 10 of the boards I've been on for six years, and I try to cover all the bases. No, I'm glad. I'm never glad. Able. Yeah. And you probably would have called me before I was up here, probably. So, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, there's a conference. Well, if I wouldn't have got all the years, yeah. the next. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thanks for Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it, nothing else on that. I, I need, and I'm sorry, but I need to back up one step to item number five because I'm TIF training. I did include in the amended agenda because this just came to me a couple of days ago. I got a letter from uh, Kat Corral, Catherine Corral, she's the director at the DCI. And in there she indicated that it would be nice to be able to come out, do an outreach uh, seminar or whatever else in Trinidad, and or do we want to combine with Balsenburg and have some dialogue between DCI, Trinidad URA, Walsenburg URA. 
Well, I will be speaking with her on the 25th of July uh, to make a determination of how. What's what's an indication? Of what you what, what, would y'all, you know, if it happened in Walsenburg or have Walsenburg come here, we could host it, however the case may be. Um, I like the idea of working with other entities and combining strengths. That was sort of what we did. So 100% okay. uh, for that. Where? Um, yeah, I had it in there, but I could say, yeah, just don't, don't think that this packet of stuff hasn't confused me as well because uh, there's a lot to track. But yeah, that, that's one of the what things I, I will speak with her. She sent me an email today to confirm the meeting. And so before I, I uh, talk with her, I'll tell her that uh, we, we're, we're okay with the joint meeting if it can happen. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Uh, item number seven, items for future work session discussion. And because we covered a lot tonight, I would appreciate it that if maybe Commissioner Hollett, Commissioner Cochran, anybody, if you could elaborate a little more, send me an email or send me some information on what it was to make sure that I have jotted down everything correctly um, so that we can work on and see how we integrate it into an upcoming meeting. I won't guarantee it to be August, but we'll get it into an upcoming meeting. Well, yeah. yeah. If you have, because like I say, the, the, those, those many things for me to walk away from there and say, I've got a full comprehension or a or, or recall, I must say I can't. So, uh, not being my reason. If there are no further items for discussion or no more discussion in uh, the work session, we will now call the regular meeting uh, to order. It is 6.55 p.m. This is the regular meeting of the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority. Item number one is roll call. Holden? Cochran? Yeah. Howard? Yes. Here. Leone? Yes. Lopez? I'm here. Gregor? Here. Item number two, approval of the minutes for the June 2022 meeting of the Urban Renewal Authority. Uh, an advance copy of the minutes was sent to commissioners in the uh, initial uh, agenda packet. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve minutes. Second motion. There is a. I'm sorry, it's going to be nice. There's a motion by Commissioner Leone with a second by Commissioner Lopez for the approval of the minutes. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Welcome. Here. Uh, yes. Howard? Uh, yes. Motion to approve. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, uh, Suggest abstention because you didn't. That, uh, that's you didn't right. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. I, I didn't want to get involved in because we weren't here. Okay. So, I would, I would. Abstain. We got an abstention by Commissioner Hallett. Commissioner Cochran, would you like to change to an abstention? Yes. Abstention by Commissioner Cochran and uh, commissioners, uh, um, Commissioner Hallett. Okay. Leone? Yes. Yes. Lopez? Yes. 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 Item number three, acceptance of the financial report. And that was the information I think we touched on a lot of it already, good or bad, so maybe we'll save time on it. But I did, again, uh, I, I did contact the treasurer's office because in year to date, uh, uh, revenue that we, re we received from uh, Los Angeles County through the disbursement of funds, uh, to, date, to date it's $19,120 a uh, year, uh, month ends. Uh, June 30th, 2021, was $31,177. <coughs> so that is where the information I was able to get and distribute earlier. So at some particular point, there may be something in better news either that that is incorrect or my understanding is incorrect, but uh, those are the numbers in black and white. So uh, again, and they cited uh, the section of the Colorado State uh, revised statutes that indicate how that can be, right. how that can be adjusted. And in, it is, it's been checked, but the formulas are based on somebody else with more knowledge than me. Uh, so, is there a motion to approve the financial report? I'd make that motion. Commissioner Hallett, with a motion to approve. Second the motion. Commissioner Lopez, with a second. 
Are there any further questions and or comments? Just a comment, Chairman, that I will bring this forward to the Treasurer's Office and Assessor's Office to get a uh, double checking on this financial number that we're presented to you. Thank you, Commissioner Lewis. Any further questions or comments? Roll call. Yes. Howard? Yes. Leone? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Gregor? Yes. Item number four, consideration of bills. Item number 4A is the, uh, was for the consideration of Southern Colorado Repertory Theater, also known as, or DBA Main Street Line. Uh, the request, in which was approved in recent months of $2,862, uh, was advised by the director, Gloria Hall, that although they were able to provide the nice looking photos of the finished product, she does not have a final invoice or statement from the uh, contractor, but she understands that this could uh, be deferred until August for payment. But she did, did apologize, the, the uh, contractor's out of town doing another project, so they were not able to. Uh, provide her documentations in advance. So with that being said, uh, is there a motion to uh, approve? I make a motion to defer it to August. I'd second that. Commissioner Leone. There's a motion by Commissioner Leone with a second by Commissioner Howlett to defer this action on this uh, re uh, request and uh, consideration till uh, August or to when documentation might be required. Roll call. Commissioner Leone? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Yes. Item number two. Item number four B. Uh, Cedar Street printing in the amount of two hundred sixty-eight dollars, two hundred sixty-eight dollars thirty-nine cents, and that bill is for uh, the uh, create the printing and creation of that packet of information that I walked <laughs> off on earlier. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Lopez with the second by Commissioner Leone for the payment to Cedar Street Printing, the amount of $268.39. Any further comments or questions? Roll call. Papa? Yes. Paula? Yes. Leone? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Gregor? Yes. Item number 4C. Uh, consideration of payment to Purgatory Valley Construction for the Americana Road Project in the amount of $31,191.30. Uh, Chairman, if I may, I think there's a discrepancy on the packet that was presented to us in the amount of $39,191.30 versus our packet uh, document of $31,000. So I think $8,000 difference. That could have been my... And does it say that on the yeah. on the signature line? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> My apology. So is there a motion with the corrected amount of $39,191.30? So moved. Second. Roll call. There is a motion by Commissioner Lopez with the second by Commissioner Hollett. Payment to Pur Pur Purgatory Valley Construction 
39,191.30 as presented on pay request number five. Any further questions or comments? Roll call. Conker? Yes. Howard? Yes. Leone? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Gregwell? Yes. Item number five, petitions or communications are all written. Is there anybody that would like to come forward and address uh, the Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority either in, uh, seated in chambers or anybody on go-to meetings? That's for a second time. Is there anybody that would like to address uh, Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority either present or on go-to meetings? Let the record reflect that there is no one that has chosen to or desires to address Trinidad Urban Renewal Authority. Item number six, old business. There is none of record. Item number seven, there is new business and there is none of record. Item number eight, report by executive director. Trinidad Urban Renewal, as discussed, does not currently have an urban renewal director, executive director. So there is not a formal report by director to be uh, presented. However, at this particular time, I would like to distribute a copy. As I did mention earlier, uh, I did receive an email uh, in which uh, uh, Commissioner Bolton, now prior, and uh, Commissioner Bolton uh, did tender her resignation, citing uh, health and uh, other and business issues. So uh, we regret that she has uh, uh, decided to uh, uh, not continue as a member, but we do appreciate. The time and effort that she has put in for the last uh, six years, seven, five years, I believe she came in uh, 2000. She re she replaced uh, Phil Rico, who at that time went to the mayor's position. So uh, her time and her uh, uh, efforts throughout that time are really appreciated, and she will be missed. Thanks very much. Let's look forward to working with Commissioner Paul. All right, item number nine, any reports by commissioners? Start with Commissioner Leone. I have a report. Uh, we attended the downtown Colorado when they had here on uh, June. We sat next to each other. Yes, yeah. we did. <laughs> <laughs> but it is really interesting, very interesting. Uh, I, I, I found that they had a lot of questions, not always a lot of answers. But I, the one thing I really got out of it is um, stronger communities working together. That was one of the biggest things. Uh, I also felt that um, they talked a lot about DOLA and how we can, DOLA can help all of us and how they'd be willing to help us get the applications to DOLA. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It was very informative. Was there and I I don't have any reports other than a recommendation that our two new board members um, have their emails properly given to uh, um, Brittany so they can get the packets. I don't know if you both got yours. You got yeah. Yeah. I got an email. I didn't know if it had that packet in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah every, everything will be sent uh, uh, electronically. Okay. So, uh, uh, what I, what I provided was well beyond scanning that and saying it would have been. Yeah, a little difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it, it's, and I'm sorry had I known that, that you didn't have it. We would have gotten one printed up for you. I'm sorry about that. Well, that's okay. Right. And that's all, sir. Commissioner Cochran? I have nothing. Commissioner Howard? Uh, just to comment on something that the chairman had recommended to me is uh, don't hit reply all in the emails that come in because it'll actually. Violate uh, sunshine, laws. sunshine laws, so you don't 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 get the reply all when you get an email from everybody. It's almost a meeting. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. And, and in fact, the, the information that was provided to to you in that packet, uh, this this comes to uh, all boards and commissions. This is the you, you read, you read it, but the, it, it's the uh, rules and regs and uh, code code of conduct actually for board. Board members of commission, boards of commission. So that's in there. I do. You, you got yours in 19 as well as you. And in, within that, I didn't include everything for uh, uh, veteran members because it's a, it's a reiteration of the call and statute. So 
Uh, I did put a no note in there that you can refer to that section in that printed information that I already gave you. I have any questions, I call my chairman. <laughs> Go ahead. That's more man. Then, if there are no further uh, comments or reports to be provided under reports by commissioners, item number 10, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Commissioner Lopez. Commissioner Lopez makes a motion with a second by Commissioner Leone. That has to be one of your favorite parts of the yeah. video. If there, so are, if there are no dissenting votes, we will call this meeting adjourned at 7.09 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Great work, all. Good night.